Well, thanks for having us, and it's a pleasure to be on uh, with Eric. That's what makes the market. Uh, I think it's excessively consensus uh, to be negative uh, and bearish, and I'm sure there's lots of eloquent reasons to do so. But listen, I still think that U.S. equities and Canadian equities, for that matter, are the best asset in the world. Uh, you can't sell everything. You can't be in bonds, I don't think, right now. Uh, you can't be in a lot of credit right now. And I still think from a bottoms-up basis, the numbers are improving. We just actually published a piece 20 minutes ago uh, that looks at the next four quarters of earnings. And as you and I have talked about on the show before, earnings have actually gone up. And, and people are not looking at the market in totality. They're not doing the work from all the 500 stocks in the S&P 500. The earnings numbers and projections for the next four quarters since the end of the year have gone up. That's number one. Number two, we're still seeing double-digit, low double-digit earnings growth, which we have seen in the last 75 years, the S&P 500 has averaged a 14% return uh, when we've had an earnings peak and then uh, when we've troughed out at these low double-digit earnings growth. So I still think that's, um, that's, that's the main part. Now, I think what's going on here today, obviously, with the Netflix effect, it's 40 basis points of the S&P 500. Obviously, uh, Netflix was an overowned stock during the direct-to-consumer days of, of the lockdown, and it's starting to, to kind of feel uh, the pain from that unwind, Scott, but longer term, we still think that is a secular growth stock that is now a growth at a reasonable price stock and probably needs a period of consolidation here. But we would be a long-term owner of Netflix at these levels. Wow, okay. A defender of Netflix. Didn't even ask you about that. Uh, he just offered that up. A defender <laughs> of the market. I mean, he says earnings are going to save the day. That, that's the bottom line. You've got all this fear in the market, and no one's looking at the real story. And that's earnings aren't going to be as bad as people think. In fact, they're going to be way better than people think. So earnings have been great, and you know if you look at operating margins over the last uh, over the last year post pandemic, there was this massive pull forward effect. There was insatiable demand for for really for goods, and so operating margins for the S and P 500 jumped from 13 and a half percent, where they've been for seven or eight years straight, all the way up to 16 percent. That 16 percent is not sustainable. Not everyone has the pricing power of a of a Tesla. And so what we're going to see throughout the year going forward is that operating margins are absolutely at risk, especially as demand comes off and some of the pull forward effect post covid goes away. And so the second thing I would say is that if you look at the Fed balance sheet, people I don't think are appreciating the magnitude of when the Fed reduces the balance sheet how that's going to hit multiples. The last 12 years, the Fed balance sheet has gone either sideways or up 11 of the 12 years. It was only down one year, and that was in 2018 when the market sold off about 20 percent. And we've looked back, and the correlation between the balance sheet direction and valuations is extremely high. So when the Fed goes and reduces the balance sheet by a trillion dollars a year, to think that that won't impact multiples, to think that that won't impact the speculation that is embedded in these markets, I just don't think is feasible.